Hi, this is Maria Miller with the Miller Group, and I'm here with Catherine from Barfield Insurance, and we're going to pick her brain just a little bit on things you may be wondering about since the hurricane, especially, uh, regarding selling or buying a home um, and the insurance. Hi. Hi. Uh, so it's great to be here. Um, so I know I had sent you an email about insuring homes after a hurricane and kind of some different situations. Um, and really a lot of the carriers are open and not open at the same time right now specifically. Uh, so some of the carriers are open statewide, so we can write anywhere in the state that they're open. Some of the carriers are open only in certain pockets. Um, a lot of the carriers are still kind of closed in Lee, Charlotte, uh, Collier counties because they were the most affected by Hurricane Ian. Um, some of them are open for new builds, some of them are open for nothing. So it's really very dependent on the home. So, so it sounds like it's very important to have an insurance company that deals with multiple carriers? Yes, uh, like Barbara, we're an independent agent. So we have, I think, around 45 different homeowners companies that we work with. Um, so we quote all of them. And if one is closed, we have another one that's open that we can write the home with. Very handy. So what advice would you give to any sellers that may have their home on the market um, after this hurricane, if they have uh, work done? Should we temporarily take the home off the market until their insurance claim is cleared? Or what would you suggest? It's going to depend, I think, on the extent of the damage. If it's very extensive and it's going to be a lengthier process, I would probably say they may need to take it off the market until the claim is closed. Um, for the buyer, it's going to be a little bit of a lengthier process for them to buy the home while there is an open claim because the uh, comprehensive loss underwriting exchange which is a clue report pulls homes for the home and for the insured that's buying it so it'll pull even if it's not theirs the open hurricane claim and we'll have to explain that it's not theirs and why it's still open um, if it's open but it's closed meaning that the carrier has closed it it's just not reflected in the clue report we can get a letter from the carrier saying that it's closed and move forward that way if it's going to be open for a while because there's a lot of damage that needs to be done, um, it may be easier for them to repair all of the damage and then relist at a later time. Okay, great. Um, a lot of my buyers have questions about flood zones. Uh, can you talk? Do you know about the different? Flood, can you talk <laughs> yes. a little bit about the flood zones and what they need to pay attention to? Yeah. So the lowest risk flood zone. All of Florida is a flood zone. First of all, let me preface it kind of that way. Florida is. A low-lying area by design where a peninsula were huge um, the lowest risk flood zone in Florida is X and then there's also um, AE and then there's a couple of different ones that go along with a um, and the V zones we don't have a ton I think of V zoning in Florida most of our flood zones that I personally work with are X and AE um, the AE is the high risk flood zone. You're going to be required to carry flood insurance if you have a mortgage and it's the one that's the most expensive, depending on where you're at. Um, it is pretty pricey right now. We have, I think a dozen or more. We have just about every carrier at Barfield insurance. Um, we have every flood carrier that is in Florida operational right now. Um, a lot of our carrier, a lot of our, uh, policies that we're ready right now are going to FEMA, the, uh, national flood insurance program, and they are the most competitive. They max out coverage at $250,000 for the dwelling and $100,000 for contents, um, which can be a great option for people that just need flood coverage to meet their mortgage or if they're getting an FHA loan, um, because that's the coverage that FHA mortgages want. Okay. If they're getting something else, we have private options as well that sometimes are more competitive, offer additional coverages that FEMA doesn't. Um, but we do write quite a bit of flood coverage. Um, and it can be pretty pricey if you're in one of those high risk flood zones, but we do try and present different options. Okay. And what about people who live in flood zone X, where it's not really high risk, but after the recent scare, are a lot of those people calling you for quotes now? Yes, I've got quite a few people. I think I've got 10 or more people right now on my desk that are asking for flood quotes. Um, we also had a lot of people asking prior to the hurricane uh, for flood quotes, and I recommend it for everyone. Um, just because, again, all of Florida is kind of a low-lying a low lying area um, because we're surrounded on three sides by water <laughs> and it really only takes one good storm for your house to flood. Um, but we do have a lot of people, I know I personally have a lot of people right now, coming and asking for flood insurance quotes. And if you're in an X zone, it's not super expensive. Um, it's not as cheap as it was a few years ago, but it's still not 
super expensive, relatively speaking. So worth it for the peace of mind, yes. maybe for a lot of people. Definitely, yeah. for sure. All right, very good. Um, now you also deal at Barfield Insurance with car insurance, mm -hmm. as well as homeowners and other types of insurance. Uh, right. You wanna give a shout out and <laughs> yeah. you know, to all the things you guys do so that buyers and sellers can contact you for your business? Yeah, so we, uh, at Barfield Insurance, we do home, auto, life, commercial, everything pretty much except for health insurance that we're working on that at in a future date but right now pretty much everything except health insurance um so if you have any needs in the insurance side definitely give us a call all right great that's all i can think of but if you want to talk more go <laughs> ahead um, i'm looking at my notes yeah um Really, a lot of the stuff I wrote down was Hurricane Ian specific. I don't okay. know when this is coming out, so I don't know if you want. We're gonna as soon as possible, yeah. So okay. yeah. Um, I don't know what we're missing. Oh, I can talk about four points and windmills. That might be good for your. Yes. Agent. Yeah. So um, something really specific is a lot of the carriers right now. Um, so a lot of the carriers right now require four point inspections, which look at the home's HVAC, roof, electrical, and plumbing systems. And it determines the age of the systems, if there have been any updates and the overall condition. Um, citizens requires it at 20 years. Citizens is the state run insurance company. And then a lot of the other carriers start to require it at 30 to 40 years, depending on the carrier. Um, for new buyers and for sellers, um, if they have one, we can use theirs as well sometimes if it's within a year. Um, but for buyers looking at homes, I would recommend if it's within the 20 years or around the 20 year mark, go ahead and just get that. If it's a super new home, like within the last five to 10 years, they're probably okay. They probably don't need it. Um, and then the other inspection that's really handy for insurance is wind mitigation inspections. That looks at how the roof is constructed and how it's, the trusses are attached to the home. Um, that offers discounts or credits on the policy and sometimes it can be substantial i know one of my coworkers did one the other day i think it was like over a thousand dollars so worth it to have your inspector do those yes. extra few steps yes and generally when they go out at least what i've been told i haven't actually spoken to inspector specifically about it but what they've told me is that when they go out they get all of this information and it's just kind of putting it onto the different forms because they're already looking at all this information when they're doing your whole home inspection for the uh loan yeah and most of my inspectors do gather yeah. all of the information and then if the buyer decides they want it then they'll bill them separately so, yeah that's yeah. kind of what i've been told too, yeah so so to I, i've had a few that had to go back but for the most part we just call and say hey we need this and they'll put it together yeah um, and then if you have sellers that the buyer is like, I have a wind mitigation, we just got it done last year. As long as the wind mitigation is five years or newer and the four point is one year or newer, we can go to the carrier and say, hey, we've got this report. It's in the seller's name. Can we still use it and work with the whatever carrier we're quoting or going to? Um, a lot of times they'll still let us use it, even if it's in the seller's name. Perfect. So they don't have to pay extra.